Welcome to another episode of Teen Pride Book Talk. This is the program where I take about five minutes or so, probably usually longer than five minutes, to talk about a young adult book that is inclusive and representative of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. And the book that I want to share with you today is a book called Pet by Akweke Emezi. And this is the author's first venture into young adult. They have written two novels for adults and then Pet, and now they have a new memoir coming out this year. So this book starts with this character here named Jam. And Jam is a teenage trans girl. She lives in the town of Lucille. Lucille is this post revolutionary utopia where all of the monsters are gone. So anybody bad in society who is deemed a monster has been expelled or locked up or otherwise getting ri gotten rid of. And this was done by this revolutionary band of angels, which are people who are good and everything that the monsters are not. Because Lucille is such a utopia, uh, it allows for characters like Jam who's a trans girl, to um, just be completely loved and supported from the very moment that Jam in her life, when she was three years old, just said no, no more when people were calling her a boy. From that moment on, her family, her parents loved and supported her and helped her do everything she could to, in her transition to make her into the girl that she wanted to be. Jam's best friend, is a boy named Redemption. Redemption lives in a polyamorous family. He has a mother and a father and then a third parent who is non-binary. And those are the reasons why I chose this book for this series, but that those are not the most important parts of this book. And that is a good thing. These are just characters who are written into this society and loved and supported and not othered in any way. And the author, Ikweke Amezi, is themselves non-binary and they were trying to create this world that was not just these two things, male and female, in this very gendered way. So Jam and Redemption are best, best, best friends. And that's another part that I liked about this book. They love each other deeply, but this is a, t a shy, tender, girl who is in this non-sexual relationship. Jam is selectively mute, so she doesn't really talk to many people. Occasionally she talks to her parents, but mostly she signs. And this is something that started when she was about three years old and she was tired of telling people vocally that she was a girl. We have a, a neurodiverse character who is trans. We have non-traditional families, and that is the makeup of this book. So Pet, is a monster or an angel, or not sure which, who was introduced to the story through a painting that Jam's mother creates. And Jam sneaks into the studio to look at this painting, which is sort of like this ghost-like furred feathered creature. And Jam cuts herself on the painting and then bleeds on the painting. And what that does is it makes this creature come alive. So the creature looks monstrous, but we don't know initially what its intentions are. And that's another key part of the story is that angels and monsters are not always who you think they are. And they might just be the people in front of you. Monsters can look like angels and angels can look like monsters. And because the adults in Lucille have constantly told the children growing up, we got rid of all the monsters. There are no more monsters. They don't really discuss what monsters look like and what angels look like. And that's sort of doing a disservice to their children because the children and the kids growing up in Lucille don't have any way to recognize a monster should a monster be standing in front of them. Part of the reason that Jam is so interested in her mother's painting is that she has been to the library to find books of what angels used to look like. And those are actually very scary images. They don't look angelic at all. They look more like this creature that has come from her mother's painting, who is eventually called Pet. But it turns out that Pet is in Lucille to hunt a monster. They tell this to Jam. Jam's parents are not happy to see Pet at all, but Jam decides to 
go along with Pet and help Pet because of where Pet reveals that the monster is, which is in Redemption's house. Redemption being Jam's very best friend in the world. So that is where the story starts, which is Jam and this creature Pet working together to flush out the monster that Pet says exists in Redemption's house or is hurting someone in Redemption's house. Uh, Jam doesn't believe this, but she also knows that she has to do whatever she can to keep Redemption and everyone in his family, whom she loves like her own family, safe. It's sort of a fantasy. It's definitely a fantasy because there is this creature that comes alive from a painting and um, hunts monsters, but it is also making a really strong social statement, which is that who among us are monsters or angels? People can be two things at once. I watched an interview with the author and they said that that was an important part of this book for them is to show that there's not just a binary between good and evil. That's a myth they were trying to expel with this society that seems in all ways to be perfect and utopian, but in fact has just sort of swept the bad stuff under the rug. So that is the basic gist of Pet without giving away any spoilers. I loved this book. I love everything that Akweke Emezi has written. This one was no exception. There are some just really interesting points made, but it's also fun to read in the way that a fantasy is fun to read. And most importantly, it's a book that has a trans girl as its main character, but it's not about her transition in any way. That is just who she is. There's just a character in this book who's a trans girl. There are characters in this book who are polyamorous. And there are characters who are selectively mute. There's someone in a wheelchair. So it's a book full of diverse characters and it's populated with people who exist outside of the heteronormative structure. So I really recommend Pet. It's unlike anything I've ever read and I'm not sure that I can even talk about it properly in order to um, compel you to read it. So what you'll have to do is in fact just read Pet. It is worth your time and I think you will love it as much as I did.